in a series called Know Your Ministry. Can you say that with me? Know Your Ministry. I'm thankful for our host online. I'm thankful for our, our watch parties, our small group leaders. Can you all say it with us again together? Know Your Ministry. You know, I, I like history. That's one of my favorite things. And I like to read biographies. And uh, I, I, like to read, I like to read a lot, anything I get my hands on, on Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Well, I read the story the other day <clears throat> during the Civil War. Uh, right in the middle of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln was really depressed. And if you've read anything about him, he had a problem with depression and being despondent, being discouraged, and kind of a dark, melancholy mood. And right here in the middle of the Civil War, it said he was very depressed. He couldn't sleep at night. So one Sunday evening, he asked his aide to go with him to church. So it was on a Sunday evening, and uh, he got his aide, and they actually walked. It was close to First Presbyterian Church in Washington, D.C. He slipped in the back and sat in the back and listened to the preacher all through the service, and it was dismissed, and they left, and they started walking back to the White House. And uh, the aide asked Mr. Lincoln, what did you think of the service tonight? And he said, it was okay. And the aide asked the president, Mr. President, what did you think of the preacher? Uh, and tell me, did you get anything out of the message? And Mr. Lincoln said, well, you know what? The, the preacher was very eloquent. The preacher, he, he could tell he had preparation. He had great delivery. He, he had great content. I, I mean, you could tell that he had done his homework. You could tell that he had prepared. You could tell that he had worked on his delivery. You could tell that he had done his research and had great content. But then the president went on to tell his aide, but he failed. He failed. And the aide said to Mr. Lincoln, how did he fail? You said he was a great speaker. He was very eloquent. You said he had great delivery. You said he had great content. You said you could tell he did his homework and great preparation. Where did he fail? Listen very carefully. And Mr. President said to him, he failed because he did not ask of us something great. He did not ask of us something great. And this whole series that we're doing right now is basically God is asking of you and me to do something great during COVID. He's asking us to know our place, get in our race, and make a difference with our ministry. He's asking us to rise up and be who God called us to be. Discover your ministry. Discover your spiritual gifts. Because ministry, let's don't make it mystic. Let's don't make it hard. I like to take hard things and make them simple. And ministry is simply this. When we discover our spiritual gift, and then we use it to serve God and serve other people, that's ministry. And God is saying to you and me right now, I'm asking you to do something great with your life. Billy Sunday, that great evangelist, he had a famous quote. He said, I am going to do something great for God in my lifetime. So right now, really during COVID, this is an opportunity. I think this is our hour for the church to shine. I think this is our hour to rise up and the church be the church. I really do believe that. I believe that God is asking us to accept the challenge, the mandate, see the opportunity, give our life to him completely, and let him multiply and maximize our life. And then through you, he ministers to a multitude of people. What say you, church? You believe it? I know you do. Can we have a praise break in this sanctuary at home? Amen. So let, let's look at it, how to, to know your ministry. And we're going over here to the board. As each of you have received a gift, each of you have received a gift. And what is that? A particular spiritual talent. So everybody at Church on the Rock here online and out in the drive-in church, we've all have received a spiritual gift from God. God didn't leave any of us out. So every member has a ministry. Every Christian has a calling. And God is asking of you and I to do something great with our calling, or with our assignment, or with the will, the plan, the purpose of God. God is asking us not to be mediocre, not to be average, 
not just to get into a bunch of things that a clutter and chaos and crisis that's, that's calling us away from our call, distracting us from our destiny. I say it's time to discover our ministry and make a difference. Ministry is simply discovering your spiritual gift and using it to serve God and serve other people. That's ministry. So each of you have received a gift, a spiritual talent, a, a divine endowment. That's an anointing. Employ it for one another. So your ministry and my ministry is not for us. It's for other people. As good stewards, so the gift doesn't belong to us. It still belongs to God. It's given to us on loan from God. Am I right? So be good stewards of, of this. And he says that it's a gift granted to Christians through God's unmerited favor. That is awesome. So I, I want to give you some basic statements, process of what ministry really is. What process? Thank you. Praise the Lord. I love it, don't you? I'm thankful just to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. So number one, discover your spiritual gift. God is asking of us something great that we want to discover our spiritual gift. Number two, you need then to follow and to fulfill God's best for your life. We need to know our gifts, our spiritual gifts, because without that knowledge, we'll never be able to fulfill God's best God's will, God's call, God's ministry for our life. And I want to give you a scripture that will back up that thought. Romans 11 and verse 29. For the gifts and the calling. Y'all see those two words? Gifts and calling. Can you say that with me? Gifts and calling. So notice that with your calling comes what? Gifts. With your calling, and we're all called, every Christian has a call, Every member has a ministry. God is asking of us something great, not to coast through COVID, but to make a difference through COVID, to surrender our life, totally put our life in God's hands, and then God will multiply your life, maximize your life, and your life will feed a multitude of people. You'll make a difference, and your life will be significant. And that's what I want for you. Is that okay? That's what I want for you. So the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That's huge. What does that mean, Pastor? That once God calls you, no matter the mistakes that we make or the wrong decisions that we've all made, I've made a plenty of them, God never, God never takes back our call. God never takes back the gifts that come with the call. So I need to know my spiritual gift because without it, I can't fulfill God's will for my life. I need to know uh, my spiritual gift because without it, I'll never know my ministry. I need to know my spiritual gift because I need it to be able to fulfill God's plan for my life. So with the calling comes gifts. And I'm so glad today that no matter the mistakes, we've all make them, we'll continue to make them. God never takes back our ministry. Isn't he a good God? You know, think about Moses in the Bible. And, and you know, Moses, uh, he grew up in Pharaoh's court. He was trained and educated by the best. He was a leader uh, uh, of the Egyptian army. He was a bad to the bone in every area. And then what did he do? At age 40, he felt the call to deliver God's people. In fact, Moses, his name means deliverer. So he was living up to his name. And he knew there was a call on his life, but he got ahead of God. Did you ever get ahead of God? I have. <laughs> yeah, he got ahead of God at, at age 40. So what happened? Uh, he, he killed a, 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 an Egyptian soldier that was abusing a, a Hebrew. And, and what happened? It boomeranged on him. And the, the, the Hebrews got mad at him because Pharaoh put more hard work on them. And then Pharaoh and the army was coming after him for what he did. So what did he do? He ran from his call. He ran from his ministry. And he got on the backside of the desert for another 40 years. And he was a shepherd. During that time and that custom of that era, that was the lowest on the totem pole of jobs. So he went from the highest, Pharaoh's court, to the lowest, a shepherd, for his father-in-law, Jethro. So at age 80, what happens? It was a normal day. Isn't it amazing that God can do something unexpected on a normal Sunday? A normal Monday. 
It was just another day. Now, watch this. Did you ever think about this? Moses thought the call was gone. He thought his assignment was over. He thought his best days were behind him. Moses, he thought at age 40, he blew it, and he thought that God withdrew the call, the ministry, on his life. He wasn't in expecting to be revisit his call. Maybe you're watching today. Maybe you're in this auditorium today or in the drive-in church today, and maybe you've run from your call. You've run from your ministry. Maybe you've made mistakes and the devil told you that your best days are behind you. Well, the devil is a liar and his pants will soon be on fire, right? Because I believe that we can revisit that call, revisit that ministry, revisit the hand of God on our life. Because on a normal day, what was, what was Moses doing? Just going through the desert, taking care of the sheep. And what happened? A burning bush. Now, it wasn't that the bush was burning that was unusual because in the desert it gets hot and you'll see bushes catch on fire. But what was the distinction was it kept on burning and didn't consume the bush. It kept on burning and didn't consume the bush. And what did God do? God revisited him with his call and he said, you're still called and you still have gifts and you're still a leader. And you, still, and you still have a work to do. And what did he do? He revisited his call. He got back on track. Isn't it good to know that the gifts and the calling of God are not retractable? God is not over. Uh, God's not through with you. He's not through with me. As long as you can feel breath, God's still working on you. Amen, everybody? Can we have a praise break in the auditorium at home? Amen. I like it. Okay, let's see if it works this time. Praise God. Use them to serve uh, God and other people, those gifts. This is called your ministry. So, you know, uh, nothing wrong with seminary and college. We have a university right here at Church on the Rock, Southeastern University, out of Florida. And did you know it's the largest full gospel university in the world? Okay? And, and we, we, we have a satellite campus right here. You can get your degree right here. We are pro-education. But you do not have to go to a seminary or college or university to fulfill your ministry. Come on, somebody. Because ministry is simply you discover your spiritual gift and you use it to bless and serve God and other people. And that's your ministry. That, that, that is that, that great thing that God is asking of you to do during COVID. All right? So what I want to do God is asking of you something great. Put your life in his hands. Your life will become significant and make a difference in the lives of other people. Now, what I want to do is I want to give you a a, a couple scriptures of something that happens when you put it in God's hands. When you put it in God's hands, it multiplies. When you put it in God's hands, God blesses it. And I just want to submit to you, God is asking of you something great during COVID. He wants you to put your life in his hands. And when you do, he'll multiply it, maximize it, and it will feed a multitude of people, and your life will be significant. You ready? So what's the story? And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place, and the time is now past. It's late. So send the multitudes away that they might go into the villages and they buy their own Big Macs. Next verse. I'm sorry. I got to go back over here. Praise God. Oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, guys, there we go. All right. There's one finger. One. One is the loneliest now I ever knew. Two can. Okay. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart Give ye them to eat. All right? And they said unto him, We have here but how many loaves? Five loaves and two fishes. Uh, They said there's a multitude of people. And what do you got? We got five loaves. Everybody say five loaves. He said, Bring them to me. Whatever you have today, bring it to him. Give it to him. Place it in his hands. All right, and then watch a miracle take place. And verse 19, you all are still back there on three dog night, aren't you? And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and he took how many loaves? 
Five loaves, two fishes. He looked up to heaven. What did he do with the five loaves? He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples fed, met the need of the multitude. And they did all eat. And they were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained, 12 baskets full. Now, what I want you to remember is how many loaves? Five loaves. Now, by itself, it didn't multiply. By itself, it, it, it couldn't feed. It wasn't enough. But when it was placed in his hands, it was more than enough. When you and I put our life in his hands, then your life becomes more than enough to fulfill his ministry for your life. Okay? So I guess we just jumped ahead. That's cool. Ephesians 4.11. And he gave some. Now we're going to look at five gifts here, five spiritual gifts. They're called ministry gifts. How many loaves of bread were there? Five. How many ministry gifts are there? Five. And he gave some apostles, that's one. Some prophets, that's two. Some evangelists, that's three. Some pastors, that's four. Some teachers, that's five. So how many ministry spiritual gifts? There are five. Now, what are they given for? What are the purpose of those gifts? That is for the perfecting or the equipping of the saints for the work of the who has a ministry? The saints. Who has a ministry? Every member. Now, those that have one of those five ministry gifts, the purpose of that is to equip and help grow spiritually development in the life of the believer, in the life of the member. Because every member has a ministry, and every Christian has a calling. So we see then the type and shadow of those five lows by itself was not enough and not significant. You and I, without God, will never fulfill our destiny, our purpose. We'll never really be the people God met us and made, made us and created us to be. But when we put our life in his hands, what does he do? He blesses your life. He multiplies your life. He maximizes your life to feed, nourish, help, minister to a multitude of people during COVID. God is asking of you and I something great during this season. Amen, everybody? All right, so uh, let's go on. Here's another story. Watch very carefully. Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude. And you know what the multitude needs today is empathy. Come on, somebody. Uh, the world right now, people that you work with, live with, right now they need not just sympathy. Sympathy says, oh, I feel sorry for you and does nothing about it. But empathy says, I feel sorry for you and does something about it. Makes a difference in that person's life. So Jesus was moved on compassion, with compassion because they continue with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. Lest they faint in the way. And the disciples said unto him, where are we going to get enough bread in the wilderness to feed such a great multitude? How are we going to meet the need? All right. And Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? In the first story, how many were there? Five. The type and shadow was how many ministry gifts? Five. And Jesus said to them, how many loaves have you? And they said, seven and a few little fish. So now we're looking at seven loaves, and it's still not enough. The need is far too great. Right now, there's a major need during COVID, right? So God is asking of you and I something great. He's asking for us to surrender our gifts, surrender our life, surrender our talent, put it in his hands. Then he can bless your life, multiply your life, maximize your life, and meet the needs of a multitude of people. And we see a revival, an awakening like we've never seen before in the United States of America. Amen, everybody? All right. So it goes on there to say, I love this, it goes on there to say, and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. To sit down on the ground. Why don't you guys just move my scriptures for me because my fingers aren't anointed today for some reason. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes and he gave thanks and he break it and he gave it to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Next verse. All right. Having then gifts differing. So now we're in Romans 12. How many loaves of bread were there in that story? Seven. 
How many, this is called, now watch guys, I'm giving you a list of spiritual gifts. So here is listed what we call motivational gifts. The others were called ministry gifts, and there were five. And there were how many loaves in the miracle? Five. The story we just read, how many loaves in that miracle? Seven. How many gifts in, in this passage? Seven. Now, everyone in this room, boy, it's good to be in the house of the Lord with you today. Those of you online, same thing. Out in the drive-in church, same thing. But here there are listed seven motivational gifts. And according to the Bible, everybody on the sound of my voice that's a believer, you have some of these gifts. You might not know it yet, but we'll help you find it. You might already know it, and we can help you sharpen them and reach more people and meet more needs. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that's given to us, whether number one, prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of our faith. Now, this word prophecy here, this is not being a prophet, okay? A person with a gift of prophecy, for them, they're very direct, they're very blunt, it's black or white, there's no gray matter, okay? They get to the point, we're going to look at all of this later, next verse, guys, verse 7. On ministry, that's number two, that's serving, like our ushers, our greeters, parking lot attendants, children's workers. Let us wait on our ministry or teaching. There's the third one, on teaching. Next verse. Or he that exhorteth, being an exhorter, an encourager. How many of you know that we need encouragers today? Well, if you're an encourager and this is natural, that's your spiritual gift. And if you give that to God, put it in his hands, he'll bless that gift. He'll multiply it, maximize it, and you will meet the needs of a multitude of people making a difference, being significant during the season of COVID. So uh, he that is an exhorter, be it an exhortation. He that is a giver. Oh, this is the one I'm praying for. God send us givers for heat and air conditioning across the street. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for our kingdom builders. They're givers. Did you know that? That, that there is the gift, spiritual gift of giving? You know people like that. It just flows out of them. It's just natural. They see a need, and immediately they want to figure out a way how to meet it. You know, for somebody sitting here or online, uh, somewhere 10 buck too, and you see the need of our heat and air conditioning over in our south campus, uh, if you have the gift of giving, you're trying to figure it out now. Well, if 100 people gave $1,000, we, well, if 75 people give, well, if we did this, that, and the other, what is that person? That's the gift of giving. Well, I give the first thousand and help. That's the person with the gift of giving. So that's a spiritual gift. And then it says, do it with simplicity. And he that ruleth. What's that all about, pastor? That's leadership. The gift of leadership. Wow. Do it with diligence. And he that shows mercy. Wow. Some people thank God for the people who have the gift of mercy. Seven loaves, seven motivational gifts. When you put the loaves or the gifts in his hands, when you accept the challenge to do something great with your life. Don't be mediocre. Don't waste your life. Uh, uh, don't give up on your life. Don't coast through life. But when you surrender your life and your gifts and put them in God's hands, he'll bless it, multiply it, maximize it, and you'll meet the needs of a multitude of people. And you can see a revival in your community, in your neighborhood, with your family, where you work. Amen. It can happen. So notice a person with a gift of mercy. How do you know that person? Well, if I knocked over this gla glass of water right here, this container, knocked it over, the first person to run up here and pick it up and wipe, wipe the water on the rug, that person has a gift of mercy. Yeah, oh, I feel sorry for Pastor. Man, he, he knocked that water over. I don't want him to slip and fall and break a leg. i got to get up there and wipe that up. That person has a gift of mercy. Amen. The person who says, well, if you wouldn't have put the cup on that, edge of the pulpit, and if you wouldn't have filled it up so much, and if pastor wouldn't have got so close, it would have never happened. That person has the gift of teaching. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. And so the person, I got to get up there and help, help them clean that up. I got to get up there, and I'm going to get another glass of water. I'm going to make sure it's cold, but not as full. I'm going to make sure pastor has it for his throat. That person has the gift of serving. Am I helping anybody today? <laughs> you say, Pastor, you haven't found me yet. Well, we will find you. Praise the Lord. All right? We will. Go ahead, guys, wherever we're going next. Okay? God is asking you to do something great. Oh, I love it. Next page, guys. Just All right, so how are we going to do this? 
How do we maximize our life? How do we multiply our life? Well, we know that when we put it in God's hands, that's when it happens. When we surrender everything we have and everything we are, what we know, what we don't know, that's when the process begins. So here's what the process looks like. Here's how you maximize. Everyone say maximize. Here's how you maximize your life. Number one is you got to know your gifts to know them. Number two, you got to accept them. You don't need anybody else's gifts. God has the right gifts for your calling. You don't need to compare. Remember last weekend? We don't want to compare. We don't want to conform. And we don't want to complain. Amen. So you got to know your spiritual gift, and we'll help you with that. Then number two, you got to accept. Don't compare yourself with anybody. Number three, number three is you have to surrender them to God. Not to the world, but to God. Because until the five lows and the seven lows was put in God's hands, it didn't multiply. It didn't become what it could become. Amen. Number four, how do you maximize? You have to grow your gifts. Just like going to the gym, uh, you, you grow through exercise. So you grow your spiritual gifts through exercise, through use, through use, through doing it, use it. Uh, that's why I said at the very beginning, through ministry, you find your ministry as the team comes out. Number five is you have to use them. You have to use them. Don't put them on a shelf. Don't make excuses. What did Moses do when he was 80 and the burning bush experience? He made excuses. He didn't, ex he didn't expect to be called again. He didn't expect to revisit his call. He made excuses why he couldn't be used. I just want you to know that, that don't let what people say or what we have done or what others have done to you disqualify you. Don't, don't let that happen because it's not people who qualifies us. It's God who qualifies us. Amen. And then number six is we use them all for him. It's all for him. Right now he's asking us to do something great with our life in COVID. And it's all about his kingdom. It's all about his glory. It's all about his church. It's all about taking as many people as we can with us to heaven. Can I have an amen? I'm done. Did you get anything today? Come on, let's give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. 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 Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Stay with me on the parking lot, drive-in church. Stay with me online right now. You're watching, you're listening, and you're saying, Pastor, uh, boy, you, you, you read my mail. I felt like God couldn't use me. I felt like sometimes God doesn't love me. God's forgotten all about me. I just want you to know he hasn't. Those are lying thoughts. God's for you. God has a purpose for your life. God never retracts it. God never takes it back. So all we need to do today, maybe for a fresh start, maybe for a new start, maybe for a restart, is to simply give our life, everything we have, everything we are, to Him. Put your life in His hands today. I'm not talking about religion, churchianity, institution, organization. I'm talking about a relationship. If you need a fresh start, a new start, a restart, just give, give what you are and what you have to him. Place it in the master's hands and watch God make a difference and do something great with your life. So uh, we're all going to pray this prayer. Uh, everyone here, would you please repeat it out loud? Those of you in home, uh, home parties, watch parties, small groups, say it with us. Those of you out in the drive-in church, say it with us there in your car. Here we go. Heavenly Father, I repent. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for me, and He rose again. Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Show me my spiritual gifts and make a difference with my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching today. Here at Church on the Rock, our purpose is to help you know God better. And one way to do that is to help you take your next step. Head on over to cotr.org slash online, or you can email us online at cotr.org. We want to connect with you. We want to help you along your journey through Growth Track or maybe a small group. We want to get you connected today. Love you and appreciate you. And never forget, God is for you.